Discovering Alabama is a production of the Alabama Museum of Natural History. Getting there, and I think they're going to maintain this in yeah. a natural state, so it'll just get old and yeah. ancient again. Yeah, I, I want to, as I said, I really am serious about wanting to come back, and uh, I hope in the future I won't be so rushed with other things and, and yeah. actually visit places like this. I might call on you for advice. Oh, I, I would be honored. Yeah. We're always thrilled to get you back in Alabama. <laughs> Yeah. Every, every time you come back to Alabama, there's a excitement reverberates throughout the right? state. Yes. Oh. This program is about a land unknown to many people, a land that in many ways has maintained its native natural wonders, a place of bountiful backcountry, forests, streams, and wildlife more diverse than can be found in much of the inhabited world. Come along with me as we explore the wild wonders of this land. Come along as we discover Alabama. This, this really is a, a, a very nice place, and I'm just noticing that uh, you've got really some quality heart. Look at this. Yeah, Welcome to Discovering Alabama. You know, I usually invite you to come along with me as we explore the wild wonders of our state. Today, I want to invite you to come along with me and a friend, Mike McKenzie from Alabama Public Television, and our very dear friend, Dr. E. O. Wilson. A very dear friend and, and uh, a, a many times seen on Discovering Alabama, which has been on APT for more than 30 years now, as Doug has helped us explore uh, the wonders and, and the wonderful people of of Alabama. And we appreciate this opportunity to have a little visit with, well, he's normally known as Professor E.O. Wilson, but uh, we've trekked enough together, he insists we call him Ed. And uh, Ed was first uh, participating in one of our shows, gosh, over 20 years ago, 1994, in our Red Cockaded Woodpecker show. We're beginning to understand that because humanity really has lived for thousands or even millions of years in natural environments teeming with as many different kinds of organisms vital to their existence during most of that time that human beings today need it in a deep psychological, even spiritual sense. So we should be thinking more and more about saving plants and animals and natural ecosystems uh, as part of our heritage. So that first segment was from 1994. Time flies. It's another several years, 1999, before E.O. Wilson appears with you again. Right. Uh, next is in our uh, Duggar Mountain Wilderness show, where he speaks eloquently about uh, uh, the human need for nature, the spiritual need. That's a, a common theme of discovering Alabama, as long as you've been there, is the need for nature. Yes, and those of us who are Alabama born, we just know that. <laughs> but it took an Alabama boy to go to Harvard and become famous, make a name for himself before the rest of the world began to find out. You know, when we talk about the reasons for saving the environment, beautiful places like this, uh, we Americans have a strong tendency to try to put everything in practical terms, which are very sound in this case, you know, that the environment is what ultimately sustains us, the environment is a major source of our future wealth, and so on. We tend to overlook the spiritual aspect and uh, the ethical aspect. And the question in terms of saving our ecosystems around the world, here in Alabama, we have some of the most beautiful in North America, and around the world, uh, the, the issue is also ethical. And it has to do with uh, who are we to be destroying the rest of life? We're in the position maybe of wiping out half the species by the end of the century, the, you know, humanity as a whole in the globe. Uh, and I have been pleased that in this issue, science and religion come together very well. Because on the one side, we have increasing numbers of religious leaders and thinkers who are saying that there's something terribly wrong with our destroying the creation. You know, this is just fundamentally wrong from a religious viewpoint. And the scientists are saying it's something, it's just 
if you, if you have any ethical concern at all, it's just fundamentally wrong to be destroying, well, they may not call it the creation, but they would, may call it millions of years of evolution. That clip was from our Alabama wetland show. And I've got to give a little nod to our friends over at the other side of the state at Auburn University because uh, it was over there giving a lecture at the time and they were very graciously accommodated our visit and, um, and, and actually uh, Ed's an Alabama fan, but uh, he was giving a rather special lecture to our friends at Auburn at, at that at that moment. Yeah. Well, he's an Alabama fan speaking at Auburn wearing a Texas Tech hat. Yeah, yeah he was giving a lecture at Auburn, but he had just come from giving a lecture at, at, at Texas, so <laughs> he's, he's quite the, the popular speaker. Um, and speaking of which, and on the Alabama wetlands thing, about the time, you may have noticed the, uh, the lush greenery where we actually interviewed him. We uh, uh, took him down to a segment of the Bartram Trail down in the Tuskegee National Forest and uh, and uh, discussed all manner of things. You interviewed him both for the Alabama Rivers Program and the Alabama Wetlands Program. Uh, when we have an opportunity to talk with him, we talk to him about anything and everything. <laughs> and in fact, the subject of the book I was writing, uh, Discovering Alabama Wetlands, mm -hmm. came up and he volunteered to write the forward. That's right, he uh, did that same time, yeah. I guess. Yeah, and uh, I, I was flattered to, to say the least. Uh, and it was a number of years before we caught back up with him again for another interview. But when we did, it was very timely because that's when Alabama was attempting to, uh, pa uh, to renew the nationally famous Alabama Forever Wild program. Right. And Ed participated in our show about that. And here's a clip from that. Uh, when it comes to uh, natural history and the natural environment generally in Alabama, uh, which I've been studying off and on all my life. Uh, Alabama uh, deserves to be thought of as uh, a relatively unknown jewel within America as a whole. I bet that most Alabamians are, do not realize that this state uh, is one of the several richest in America uh, in the numbers of species, of plants and animals, and of the numbers of ecosystems that you find if you will go uh, in a transect from the Tennessee Valley and Mount Shia, the terminus of the Appalachians, and southward all the way across down uh, to, uh, say, the Red Hills of Alabama, an extraordinary little known area, even unexplored in terms of biology, and on, the, on down to the bay and the coast. Uh, there are very few states, even among the biggest, like California and Texas, that can rival Alabama in the variety of those uh, natural environments. We have a natural environment in Alabama, too, that's getting better as we go along. Because uh, uh, what were once cotton fields and abandoned uh, farms now are coming back in forest. You can see that just driving around the back roads of Alabama. And the natural world is gradually reestablishing itself in those areas where we don't continuously cut over uh, the, uh, the timber. Uh, and that uh, regeneration of Alabama's natural environment includes the, re, the gradual return of the longleaf pine. That magnificent yellow pine, as the timber people called it, uh, which was completely cut over, once covered 60% of the South and was a source of Alabama's riches, a big source for a good part of a century, now is being allowed to come back. So I could go on really for a very long time, part by part of Alabama, and I know that uh, you have covered this wonderfully yourself, piece by piece. Uh, so I'm making that kind of overall assessment uh, to, get, uh, to give a um, uh, uh, expatriates 
a view, you know, my view from being outside the state looking in, and one that I think the uh, rest of the country uh, will come increasingly to appreciate. You can really see the uh, love that uh, Dr. Wilson has for this state and, and uh, how, how much he, he loves this state, but there's, there's also a practical side to E.O. Wilson. He is, uh, some would say, um, intellectual, esoteric <laughs> scientist, and yet uh, he has a practical side, and that really shines through in, in this next clip from our 2012 Forever Wild show. In arguing for the saving and even the restoration of natural environments all around us, uh, we tend to overlook uh, beyond the aesthetic value, the entertainment value, the, how shall I put it, spiritual value, uh, as important as those are, uh, there is the, uh, well, the economic value. And that includes the value that natural s systems, undisturbed natural systems, provide to our lives and our economy. We call them ecological services. I think every school child should be able to recite the ecological services that nature provides. They include cleansing the water. They include, in forests and other natural vegetation assemblages, they include holding the water and releasing it so it doesn't come down in a flood and leave behind dry land. They include regeneration of the soil. They include uh, the uh, provision of all sorts of natural products that we make use of, that we're just beginning to explore as a possible yield from uh, the many different kinds of species that we've hardly begun to study, and on and on. Uh, some years ago, a group of economists and oncologists made an estimate uh, very rough, obviously, for the whole world, of a value in dollars that um, the natural ecosystems of the world give us scot-free. And that dollar value is very roughly that of the gross world product, which is the combined gross national product, or gross domestic product, more accurately, of all of the nations in the world. A profound thought. With all the money in the world, you couldn't pay to create the world. Uh, I imagine, Doug, that there have been a lot of profound thoughts uh, from E.O. Wilson that you uh, didn't even have time to edit into the programs. Uh, m exactly. Many profound thoughts. Some more profound than others. No, no. I, I am not a friend of Alabama. I am an Alabamian. Well, you know what I mean. Well, that's what yeah, I mean. okay. You know, well, I, I do want to straighten that yeah, out. Yeah, I I, okay. I, yeah, okay. I, I misspoke. You know, I've been out of, away from Alabama. I, figured, I just noticed this recently. 60 years. That's one-third the time of the history of American Alabama. Now, that is really a long way to be away. But uh, what I've written in this book, this is just, you know, I'm off the record here, uh, in, uh, which is the history of Mobile, why we are here. Uh, I said, I start off, I say, I want to get some, one thing clear. I am not a Harvard professor who was born and raised in Alabama. I'm an Alabamian who went up north to get work. Okay, so I'm, let's start again. All right, as an Alabamian. Well, of course, I'm Alabamian, but I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> It looks like you and your crew had a little bit of fun talking with Dr. Wilson. Yeah, we, we try to have fun, and, and Ed seems to really enjoy it, uh, as in this clip. You know, I think I know what you're referring to. <clears throat> that was when we went out to this little piece of Bartram's Trail. Exactly. And I remember that uh, day very well. Uh, so um, uh, let me uh, then just stop for a, think for a moment again and give that answer. And this one won't be so long-winded. My homage to Alabama's natural environment has been given, and so I can make shorter answers. The first part is going to be a boast. And I hope they're going to, you know, people are going to say that's ridiculous what he just said. Um, as an Alabamian, 
And as a long-term student of this state, I think I can say without much hesitation to uh, teachers and parents and students, thinking about the education of their children, that something first they know. We are now in a techno-scientific age. Scientific knowledge is doubling every 10 to 20 years. The totality of it, of proven, pretty well proven information is going like that. Uh, one of the key parts of education to be part of this era and this whole new configuration of society uh, is biology, understanding some biology. Biology should be a key part of curriculum. You know, Ed Wilson is uh, one of the most awarded, if not the most awarded, scientist in history. And yet, as you can easily tell, he's got a real humility about him. He does, humility and, and thoughtfulness. Uh, you can tell he doesn't uh, just jump right into an answer. He, he thinks about it first. Uh, you don't think he's a little bit biased towards biology, though, maybe? Well, <laughs> he is certainly the most renowned biologist uh, these days, uh, but, uh, and quite the superior biologist. But I think if he has a bias, it's probably more towards education, as we invited him to be in our very recent show about Alabama coastal paradise and our little program about education in the coastal area. Investing in education is investing in everything we claim to hold dear. But there's another way to look at the fiscal realities of hands-on, feet wet learning opportunities. We can ask what happens if we don't invest? What happens for our children? And what happens with this paradise we celebrate as Alabamians? Uh, that's a really difficult question to answer because in my experience, I've seen people who have that spiritual feeling about, um, uh, about the continuation of wild nature. Um, I think it has most, mostly to do with childhood experience. And for that reason, I consider uh, the coming heavy urbanization of Alabama's principal cities as um, making it less likely that children have the experience that I and so many Alabamians did have, which is to be cut loose, to uh, go wandering through the woods alone or with some buddies, exploring, uh, messing up nature a little bit. Uh, that's the kind of experience that makes you a lifetime devotee of the wild environment and gives you in later life uh, with more maturity and more understanding that uh, sense of spirituality that I think is vital to the conservation ethic. Doug, you and Dr. Wilson uh, seem to have the same uh, philosophy when it comes to hands-on, feet wet education. Uh, probably one of the reasons you've had such a friendship over the years. Yeah. Uh, get out, get wet, get dirty <laughs> was a, a driving thing theme since we started Discovering Alabama. It was born of teacher training programs, and that, that was our, our primary theme. Um, but, you know, you can make uh, all kinds of uh, economic arguments, ecological arguments, uh, spiritual arguments for uh, protecting the ecology. But uh, as Ed says, uh, sometimes if you just get out there and mess up nature a little bit <laughs> is where you bond and become a real lifelong conservationist. No, absolutely. And, you know, when, when my kids were younger, we, uh, we were watching Discovering Alabama. We were getting out and uh, following your trail uh, with the Boy Scouts and, and uh, encouraging them to get involved with, with nature, which uh, I always saw as a, as a great way to, to further their education and their understanding of the world. Yeah, your 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 scout troop has been in a cu couple of our shows. They're smart, smart guys. Uh, a, a couple, uh, um, not as many, of course, as E.O. Wilson. No, we we love to get Ed in as many times as we can. We really do. Um, and in fact, uh, here's a little piece from the show about Alabama's coastal ecology. 
As the waters of the delta blend with the bay, there is yet more reason to sing the praises of our rich natural heritage. That's where you have uh, an enormous diversity of habitats. Uh, much of it is preserved and beautiful still. And I believe that as Alabama grows economically, as it will, and Mobile in particular, uh, then uh, we should put a lot more of our thinking and our resources into preserving that particular part of Alabama. Now, here's the raw, unedited version of the piece you just saw from our Coastal Ecology show. And I think you'll see we really didn't change the essence of it. Uh, uh, we, we kept the substance of it, but uh, as we all know, there's only so much you can fit into a, into a finished show. You know, the Alabama Gulf Coast uh, should be expanded to include the Florida Panhandle. You can eliminate that if you wish. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Elim you know, erase this fact. It doesn't make sense for the Florida Panhandle to belong to Florida. And since I wrote the history of Mobile, uh, my recent history of Mobile, um, I uh, know the reasons why it happened, and it ought to be corrected. Now I'll move on and answer your question. Uh, <clears throat> changes in the Alabama Gulf Coast, the immediate coastal region, say from the Mobile Tinsaw floodplain, the Perdido River floodplain, uh, to the south, to the barrier islands, and particularly Dolphin Island. Fortunately, uh, there really hasn't been a great deal of change, except right along the beach area. I've seen uh, Gulf uh, Shores um, and Orange Beach, I've seen them transformed into um, something that looks like Atlantic City. And that doesn't make me happy to see it uh, develop to that point. But when you go inland along the coast, there's a lot of woodland and natural environments remaining and wetlands. So much that um, I think we should be paying more attention to uh, preserving these uh, by making them uh, you know, more um, decisively into reserves. Uh, that's where you have uh, an enormous diversity of habitats. Uh, much of it is preserved and beautiful still. And I believe that as Alabama grows economically, as it will, and Mobile in particular, uh, then uh, we should put a lot more of our thinking and our resources into preserving that particular part of Alabama. Ten years later, and he still remembers that uh, walk with you on the Bartram Trail in the Tuskegee National Forest. Well, you know, friends remember time spent together. And um, when I say friends, I don't mean Ed and me. I mean Ed and Alabama. That's great, because I think to a large degree the future mm -hmm. of Alabama kind of depends on you coming here and mm -hmm. helping people focus on the natural wonders mm -hmm. of the state. Uh, uh, your voice. Uh, gives it the whole credibility that, uh, of the message that we've been trying to pursue for years. Sure. Well, I'll do what I can.
Discovering Alabama is a production of the Alabama Museum of Natural History, the University of Alabama. This program is supported by grants from the Solon and Martha Dixon Foundation. The Alabama Wildlife Federation, working for wildlife since 1935. And the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, State Lands Division.